What's up my Yuki Bros? I'm your host, the one, the only, the RJB0. Welcome to the January 2015 ban list according to Logic Video Series. I'm hyped for this, I hope you are too. This is the ban list series where we talk about the ban list according to actual observations of Konami's history of making ban lists. Now, last format I said that I wasn't going to do this because Konami had become fairly unpredictable since the split between the OCG and TCG. However, I think since then Konami has made enough ban lists to make some patterns that we can follow and maybe predict a little bit how they're going to work. In this video, I'm going to discuss specifically the cards that are likely to get hit, and in the next video, I will be talking about cards that may get a boost on this list. So, I want to talk about some things that are different between how Konami used to hit cards in the meta versus how they do recently. So it used to be that Konami would focus on all of the decks that are currently in the meta, and they would hit almost exclusively cards that started loops and cards which special summoned or searched from the deck. That is Konami's MO before the TCG OCG split. Since then, Konami has been focusing on two things when it comes to hits. Things that create degenerate loops and instant win combos. For instance, when they ban Morphing Jar and Morphing Jar number two in anticipation of the release of Jackpot 7, and they hit cards that are significant threats to the future meta. Back in the pre-Primal Origins format, they hit Mermail Abyssgund, and they hit Coach Soldier Wolfbark, both of which presented pretty substantial threats to the meta post-Primal Origins. Instead of really adapting to the Primal Origins set, they would splash in a couple of cards from Primal Origins and then essentially ignore the rest of the things from it. The same thing happened when they hit Gear 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 instead of hitting the Hat deck. Hat did not present a significant threat to the future meta because Shadow, Satoru Knights, and Burning Abyss all are decks that can really deal with the large number of cards that get destroyed in a Hat matchup. Gear Gear, however, were about to receive a Structure deck, and a very consistent and very explosive card like Gear 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 was actually a significant threat to the coming meta. These two criteria actually see a couple of applications in this format. There is an instant win card, an alternate win condition coming out in the near future, and that card is Ghost Trick Dork Lord. Dork Lord has an alternate win condition attached to it. So far, there aren't any consistent combos when it comes to getting that instant win condition with Dork Lord. However, I don't think Konami's opinion is that nuanced on the subject of making sure that instant win combos are difficult to achieve. The only combo I can think of involving Dork Lord also involves Rank Up Magic Admiration of the Thousands. And I think that if Konami were to hit Dork Lord as an instant win condition, that would be the card to go for. There aren't really any others that are likely to create Ghost Trick Dork Lord's instant win condition. I think Konami may hit that in order to promote the Ghost Trick model of achieving that win condition, as opposed to instantly putting down a Ghost Trick Dork Lord with all 10 materials. Once again, it's not a consistent combo, and people are probably going to wonder why Konami did it, if they do it, but that's something that Konami has been hitting recently and may in the future. To clarify something, when I say that a deck is a threat to the meta, I don't just mean that it may have a decent matchup against certain decks in the meta, or that it is viable in a game against another deck in the meta. What I mean is a deck threatens the meta when it threatens the very viability of a large number of decks in the meta. And I can only think of two decks in the current format that do that, and those two decks are Burning Abyss and Cliff Warts. Neither Satellanites nor Shadows have such a good matchup against another deck that they threaten the ability of that deck to run in a format. However, both Cliff Warts and Burning Abyss have that power, and Burning Abyss and Cliff Warts both have that power over decks that are going to be released in the near future. Burning Abyss, a little bit like Insectors in the past, is a bit of a gatekeeper for the meta. There are a lot of decks that just cannot stand before the massive amounts of removal and field presence that a Burning Abyss deck can put down. There are a lot of decks that just cannot stand before the massive amounts of removal and field presence that a Burning Abyss deck can put down. Therefore, Burning Abyss threatens the viability of all these decks that cannot stand before its massive amounts of removal and its recycling of resources. There are really three options when it comes to hitting Burning Abyss that people have talked about the most, those being hitting Dante, hitting Tour Guide, and hitting 
Fire Lake. Fire Lake, in my opinion, is the real threat to the meta. It's the card that removes basically your opponent's entire field. It's a threat to the Cliffwart deck, and it's a threat to Neckloths. It blocks a lot of the decks that are coming out of Secrets of Eternity as well, like the Spirit Beast and the Osenju. It stops the Teller Knights from setting up back row, and removes all the field presence from a Shadow player. Dante getting hit to one is another possibility that players have talked about. However, I don't think that that would have the same effect on the deck as hitting Fire Lake would. Dante is an extra deck monster, meaning it is accessible at any given time. Fire Lake, however, has to be drawn from the deck, making a hit to Fire Lake much more substantial than a hit to Dante. Dante is also recyclable through Seer, which means that in order to hit Dante effectively, they would also have to hit Seer at the same time. Dante is also extremely central to the general strategy of Burning Abyss, which Konami doesn't want to cripple because Burning Abyss still has more pieces coming out in the near future. That's the same reason why I don't think Tour Guide is likely to get hit, since Tour Guide is essential to the opening plays for a Burning Abyss deck. Limiting Fire Lake would slow down the deck's ability to access its biggest power play, and therefore make it less of a threat to the coming meta. Cliffords on their own are not a threat to the meta. They themselves are a really strong deck with really strong matchups, but the real threat to the viability of other decks, including Necklaws, is the Floodgates. Both Skill Drain and Vanity's Emptiness hit other decks in the format really, really hard. And even though MST is really popular, and the same goes for Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, having each of those cards at three makes it really tough for any other deck to consistently deal with Cliffords' onslaught of Floodgate cards. Vanity's Emptiness is also a generic out for Neckloths, limiting the viability of potentially one of the most profitable decks for the coming format. I think both Skill Drain and Vanity's Emptiness have a really strong chance of getting hit to one, particularly since so many other Floodgate cards have been hit to one in the recent past. A lot of people are saying that Vanity's Emptiness should be banned to remove the sack factor, however I believe that we have never seen a card that has a Floodgate potential but with the potential to self-destruct. Personally, I don't think Vanity's Emptiness needs to go to zero. Based on the OCG, there is one card in Shadows that may present a threat to the future meta, and that card is El Shaddaal Winda. El Shaddaal Winda, particularly in combination with the Secret Village of the Spellcasters, is an instant lock to Neckloths. And that may or may not be something that Konami wants to keep around. So to recap, cards that are likely to get hit on the coming list include Rank Up Magic Admiration of the Thousands, Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, Vanity's Emptiness, Skill Drain, and possibly El Shaddaal Winda. Other than that, there seem to be no real cards that threaten the coming meta. And based on recent history with Konami and the patterns in which they make ban lists, it doesn't strike me that Konami is going to hit any cards that don't threaten the meta just because a deck has been fairly good recently. So those are my predictions as to what are going to get hit. Once again, next video I will be talking about cards that might get a boost on the coming list. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe for more decks, discussion, analysis, and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. Thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, the one, the only, the RJB0, and I got a jet. See you guys.